This is a short video describing the life of an Indian religious sister, Saint Euphrasia of Secret Heart, a sister of the Congregation of the Mother of Carmel, CMC, and her journey to sainthood. Euphrasia was born on 17th October 1877 in the Chirpakaran Elvathingal family in Kathur village, Trishur in Kerala, India. She was baptized in the Mother of Carmel Church, Edathurthi, and was given the name Rose. Her mother was a very pious woman and taught her to pray, say the rosary and be devoted to Mother Mary. According to her own testimony in her letters, she had mystical experiences and visions. Rose dedicated thus her virginity to God at the early age of nine at the instruction of Mother Mary, who appeared to her and taught her to adore God every hour with the angelic choir. Her father took her to the boarding house of the Carmelite sisters at Kunamav. In spite of being very happy and satisfied in the boarding of the sisters, Rose had to wait for about nine years to enter the religious life because of her ill health. Twice, she had to go home for treatment and return. Once she was sick unto death, but the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, appealed to her and healed her. So they accepted her because of her piety, modesty, disciplined life and obedience. At the redivision of the Siro Malabar Vicariate in Kerala, at the instruction of Bishop Menacheri, Rose was brought with the other candidates to Ambarakade, the first convent of the undivided Trichur Diocese. She became a postulant in 1897 and later along with the reception of the religious habit in 1898, she took the name Euphrasia of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and offered herself fully to her Lord and Master Jesus, thereby rendering herself as the Lord's own. She made remarkable progress in prayer and meditation, in an all-absorbing love for the Lord Jesus, and underwent great trials and tribulations, especially from the evil spirit. On 24th May 1900, Sister Euphrasia offered herself to God in everlasting love and service of the Lord, through the profession of religious woes in the congregation of the Mother of Carmel, founded by blessed Kuriakos Elias Chavra and the Italian Carmelite missionary Father Lepod Boccaro OCD at Kunamav Ernakulam district, Kerala in India. After her profession, she was first appointed assistant novice mistress and served also as infirmarian for the six sisters. After four years, she got the mandate to be the main novice mistress of the congregation. As novice mistress, Sister Euphrasia was very particular that her novices grow in great ascetic discipline, holiness and spirituality following the footsteps of the great master Jesus Christ. Although she did not like it, under obedience she had to accept the appointment as superior of the same St. Mary's convent, Ulur. She was a real loving mother. Because of the extraordinary things happening in her life, Mar John Menacheri, the Bishop of Trichur, who was her spiritual director, ordered her to confess everything to him, and if this was not possible, to write to him everything about her spiritual life. Accordingly, she wrote to him letters. In spite of her repeated requests to destroy those letters, without her knowledge, the Bishop kept them. These letters have been preserved and are our main source to know about her sanctity, deep spirituality and union with God, as well as her extraordinary mystical experiences. The people of Ullur, seeing her praying always close to the sanctuary, qualified her the praying mother. The way she went about, with eyes cast down, immersed in divine love, was sufficient to arouse devotion in the onlookers. Observing her very graceful presence, and the peace and serenity on her face, the sisters also used to call her the mobile tabernacle. In her spiritual life, she followed St. Teresa of Avila as her model. She became one with her Lord in mystical marriage and attained the highest peaks of mysticism. She wrote to her spiritual father, For the last four months, I noticed a special thing in me. Wherever I am, when I do some work or hold a conversation, Someone lovingly speaks to me in my heart, without intermission, and withdraws my mind to that great love of the heart. The very name, 
Sister Euphrasia of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, is indicative of her special devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. As Mother Superior, she entrusted the watchfulness and administration of the convent and the sisters to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. She installed a statue of the Sacred Heart at the center of the convent and prayed there often. She used to advise others to cultivate the same devotion. Mother Euphrasia used to sit close to the sanctuary and talk to the Eucharistic Lord. O oh, loving Jesus, most sweet Jesus, lonely Jesus, let my heart be an ever-burning lamp for you. She longed for Holy Mass and Holy Communion, even on days when there was no Mass. During the Thanksgiving after the Holy Mass, she used to get visions and revelations. The very appellation, Mobile Tabernacle, is a fitting tribute to her devotion to the Holy Eucharist. In her love for the crucified Lord, she used to kiss the crucifix repeatedly and speak to the crucified Lord, holding it to her bosom. She partook of the Passion of Christ by inflicting severe blows of the scourge on her body, by wearing a chain of thorns around her waist, by kneeling on hard stones, making use of a stone for pillow and giving up food altogether. Receiving Holy Communion daily in a penitential spirit, she offered his blood as sacrificial offering to God the Father in reparation for sin and the ingratitude of many. Mother Euphrasia had a filial devotion to Mary, the mother of Jesus from the very beginning of her life, till the end. She used to refer to the Blessed Virgin as a mother par excellence, much above her own mother in solicitude. Praying of the Rosary and seeking the powerful intercession of Mother Mary, she used to help the souls in purgatory. The Immaculate Mother, to whom the St. Mary's Convent is dedicated, appeared to her several times and helped her with the opportune counsels to become a saint. At the age of 75, she fell sick and was bedridden for three days. Having received the sacrament of anointing of the sick, on 29th August 1952, she was called for her eternal reward. The bell of the Chirleam Convent Church, for the establishment of which she had prayed much and offered sacrifices, rang by itself, announcing the death of a saint. Drawn by Mother Euphrasia's fame of sanctity and reputation of signs and miracles that God wrought through her intercession, People began to visit her tomb and seek her help in their various needs like diseases, financial strains, for success in examinations, for obtaining jobs and for help to grow in prayer and spiritual life. Even during her life, she used to intercede for the church, for the Pope, for the bishops and for the priests. She used to pray for the souls in purgatory as they often came to her pleading for prayers. Whenever she received a favour from others, she used to thank, saying, won't forget even after death. There were showers of graces and favors experienced by all those who sought her intercession. Children, parents, sisters, priests and others. The miracle that was considered for the canonization is the miraculous cure of the thyroglossal cyst of Master Joel Jensen, born on 1st October 1999 in Irnyalikuda, Trishur district, Kerala. Subsequent to the approval of the miracle by the congregation for the causes of saints, on 12th June 2014, Holy Father Pope Francis declared to enlist her name in the Book of Saints of the Catholic Church and to conduct the canonization ceremony on 23rd November 2014. Thus, Saint Euphrasia is raised to the honors of the altar and presented to the Universal Catholic Church as intercessor and model of sanctity. Saint Euphrasia, pray for us.